I'd like to talk to you today about adapting to a new way of working. Many of us have seen disruption and change on an unprecedented scale over the last few months. I'm sure many of us have had to deal with difficult situations that have required innovation, change and thought. So what we'd like to do over the next 15 minutes or so is just spend some time sharing some of the experiences that we personally have had, but also as an organisation, as Computer Centre, and how we've been able to innovate and change both our own internal processes, but how we've helped our customers innovate and change their services as well, so they can continue to adapt to this new way of working. So just for a moment, just think about the kind of change and disruption that you've had in your own lives. It may be if you're like me as a parent, as well as working from home, you've now had to homeschool your children. You may have had to change the way that you actually shop. And of course, we saw disruption to the supply chain, which meant many of us couldn't get the things that we needed. So we saw there was a necessity to innovate and change the way that these services were delivered to us. So the way that we've interacted with these different organisations and the way that they've adapted their services really shows that everyone, because of the situation that we're in, has had to adapt and change at pace, a pace that we've never ever really seen before. Now my role as a Chief Technologist at the Computer Centre gives me the great opportunity to spend time with our customers, understanding some of their challenges helping to define some of those strategies and of course working alongside them to solve some of the problems around innovation and change. What we'd like to do though is just to start off with Computer Centre and what we've done ourselves and how we've innovated and how we have changed. So just as an organisation, when that mandate went out from the government to work from home, to stay at home, we have 16,000 people many that worked in the office that had to be displaced and go back home to work. Now at the time, as an organisation, we had about 2,000 people that were working from home remotely or could work from home. And we had our VPN capability scaled to meet those 2,000. So in a very short period of time, we had to scale up and ensure that all 16,000 people could work effectively from home. In addition to this, we had many different communication and collaboration platforms that we used within the organisation. And we were on a path anyway to transition to a single uh, common platform, which was Microsoft Teams. And we actually accelerated our adoption and usage and migration to that platform so that we could be efficient, we could communicate and collaborate and work effectively, as we were told, to work from home. Now, one of the other things that we had to do was as we looked at the services that we deliver to our customers, many of them are office centric. So we have engineers on site, or we deliver maybe laptops or other devices to an office where people could normally pick them up. Now, of course, this wasn't or couldn't be the case anymore during COVID. So what we had to do was to look at those services and innovate and change them very quickly. So we pivoted away from having these office centric uh, focused solutions to be able to provide those similar or same solutions to the home. So we're able to provide home worker bundles with laptops, webcams, and other peripherals so that people could then work at home. We provided things like virtual engineering and virtual support, virtual help desks, so that people could still get the help that they needed across different mediums. So rather than just being the phone, maybe using things like video in order for them to be able to remain productive and effective in their new work environment. I'd just like to spend some time now talking about some of the things that we saw happening with our customers, some of the common themes, some of the common challenges, and some of these may help to shape your thinking and may resonate with the experiences that you also had. Now, one of the first things was the speed of change. Because of the disruption and the speed of that disruption, people had to accelerate their digital transformation. They had to accelerate some of the services that they would provide for their users and of course look at how they could shift these office centric services just as we did to be able to provide them for their users as they worked from home. In fact there's some organisations that said to me 
that they've probably done 18 months of digital transformation in the last three or four months. And this is quite an interesting dynamic because it's proved again, not only have people been successful in working from home, but also that the IT organizations can, when they have certain barriers removed, move at speed. But one of the discussions that we have had and one of the points to note is just because we can move at that speed, should we? It's probably unrealistic to expect that at the speed of change that we've seen and the solutions that have been put in place will be as good as they would have been if they had more time to plan them. So we see right now that organizations are taking stock, just pausing for a moment to look back at what has been done, to take those good points, but also to make sure that proper governance is in place so that those solutions are secure and can continue to provide service on into the future. One of the other things that we saw was actually the business coming together as a whole, more stakeholders being involved in the processes in order to provide the right experience for users that were working from home. And let me give you an example. Clearly many of us, as we're working from home, we may not have the same opportunities or the same facilities to be able to, to work from home. Some people don't like to be isolated to work away from the office. So this meant that HR then became more fully involved, understanding what the effect was of people working remotely on them. They came together with the IT organization to ensure that things such as collaboration tools were in place so they could actually communicate and collaborate effectively. In fact, we've seen that in our own organization being used with things such as virtual pubs, virtual quizzes to make sure that people stay engaged. And of course, as we think about adapting to the new way of working, when we go back to the offices, what will they be like? We've seen on one hand that people can work from home, and we've said that some don't want to do that long term. But we've also seen then that there's an opportunity for us to consolidate, to look at the spaces that we use within the office and maybe reduce some of those, but also transform the reason or the way that they are used. One of the things that I've noticed and in conversations with customers has also come up is the fact that whilst Teams, and Zoom and other technologies like these have been really good to enable us to be able to communicate and collaborate, sometimes you really want to be in a room with people so that you can maybe do whiteboarding, maybe do brainstorming and get that collaboration where you feed off each other. So there could be an opportunity to look at those spaces that we have within the office and transform them into a place, not that you go to sit at the desk to work, but rather one that you go to that's an open collaboration space where people can come together to really see those ideas grow. Now, one of the other areas that we've seen in terms of innovation and disruption is that of the contact center. Now, many of us imagine contact centers to be big buildings where lots of people are packed into answering calls and providing a customer service. Now, clearly, this couldn't be the case when everyone had to go and work from home. So what were some of the innovations that we saw in those areas? Well, again, working with some partners, we're able to provide cloud contact center services. So again, it wouldn't matter where people are actually located. As long as they had a computer, as long as they had the right bandwidth, they could connect to that cloud contact center in order to continue to provide a good service to those who need it. Now, one of the points that I'd like to make around innovation is that innovation can mean different things to different people. But I'd like to give you an example of how just small things can drive innovation. Now, many of you, as we've said, have got children that have had to be homeschooled during the lockdown period. And it's true to say that not everyone across the UK had the ability to connect via a stable internet connection, or even have a device to be able to connect maybe to the school's website or to access many of those wonderful resources that were available uh, during lockdown. Now, Computer Center working along with Department for Education was able to provide laptops uh, to pupils all across uh, the UK. Now, when we think about that for a moment, we might say, well, how does that show innovation? How does just giving someone a laptop and also an internet dongle so they can connect wirelessly to the internet, how is that innovating? Well, it's true to say, isn't it, that in a context of remote learning, connecting to the internet and devices, that isn't innovation. 
But when we think about the Department for Education, this was not a way that they've provided the ability for children in this country to learn before. So in effect, just the, the impact of having a laptop and an internet device that they can connect to access that information is giving them access to digital learning. And this is not a channel that has been used before by the Department for Education. So although it may see, seem something small, uh, the impact, as we can see, is great. The innovation, the drive and the change can really have a, a profound impact on our children. So one of the things I'd like to conclude with is just to pull these things together that we've spoken about and to think about how we can adapt to that next way of working or a new way of working. Some of the thoughts are my own personal ones, others I've picked up from talking with our customers and the vendor partners that we work with. Now I think the first thing to note is that the pace of change that we've seen won't slow down. We can see that organisations, we can see technologies and solutions changing at an ever-increasing rate. The capabilities that we can use to expand our business, uh, to innovate and drive change, it really helps us uh, to focus on what is important both to ourselves, but also to those that we provide solutions to. And also if we think about uh, the future of work, the place that we're working, well this could be uh, very different. You see, many people have proven that they can successfully work from home. Many organizations that I've spoken to have said, why would we go back to an office-centric based working pattern? In fact, we can see our hybrid solution coming together where there'll be people who work from home maybe the majority of the time, but when they do come into the office, it'll be for a more specific purpose. As we said earlier on, the human elements, the ability to collaborate and communicate, to be in the same room together, well, that can't be replaced by technology. And I'm sure we'll see an expansion of the capabilities of meeting spaces, of collaboration spaces, so that people can have these really immersive meetings, whether they're in the office or whether they're remotely, the ability to bring all these things together, we'll see an acceleration of technologies in this space. I've seen some really good technologies here that are able to pinpoint sound to where individuals are standing. So if we're standing in a room with two people, we can have sound beam directly to us. It doesn't spill out to affect others in other areas. I can see organizations working more closely together at the facilities, making sure that some of the furniture, as an example, supplements and complements the area that we'll use for those collaboration spaces. And of course, when we think about the health and well-being of individuals within the organisation, using things such as AI and analytics to understand what it is they are doing. Other things that we've seen that will really drive some of this innovation and change is bringing together of disparate solutions. And let me give you an example of that. Right now, if I think about when I wake up in the morning, or well, certainly before COVID, depending on the time that I woke up, my mobile phone would tell me that it would take an hour to get to the office, or if it was a bit later that I got up, it would say it's 10 minutes to take the children to school. Now think about that one process, my mobile phone is my virtual assistant helping me, but think about that talking to the cloud services that I have within my organization to book me a meeting room in the office automatically, to book me a desk, then to tell me via the phone that I've got those things booked within the office. So that when I walk into the office, it recognizes that I'm there. It signs me in automatically. It uh, points me to my desk by means of wayfinding. You can get the picture. A much more personalized experience that we will have as individuals as we start to see uh, the integration of these different services that we all consume within organizations uh, today. Uh, one of the really exciting things for me as well, we talked a little bit about education. Now just think about some of those cloud providers like Google or Microsoft or Amazon. Think about being able to interact with those services so you do your learning through these portals. The information where we struggle maybe, where we're good or where our children are good. These things are all fed into artificial intelligence. It starts to help us and train us and provide support via virtual assistance to help and drive people's learning and capabilities. We'd like to ask you to think about three things as we bring this talk to an end today. 
first of all, when we talk about innovation, it can mean different things. Even within your own organization, look for the things that you can innovate that may seem simple, but may have a big impact on others. And of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. We've seen that over the last few months. The speed of change has meant that we've done what is necessary to get to the outcome required. And innovation is the same. Taking those small, fast, repetitive steps in order to get us to the end point, as long as we have that clear point in view, that will help us to innovate and to drive change and not to be slowed down, maybe by some of the problems that we've had in the past. Secondly, think about your users. When we think about driving innovation and change, the reason we do this is because we want to make something better, whether that be a business process, whether that be a user experience or a customer experience. Get users involved in that process. Understand the challenges and problems that they have so that when you start to drive those change programs and that innovation, that people can really see that you have their best interests at heart or the interests of the business and that will lead to good business outcomes and satisfied users. And just finally, uh, to finish, don't be afraid of speaking with others in your peer groups, in other organisations. At Computer Centre spend a lot of time over these last few months uh, setting up round tables, bringing industries together uh, to really understand and to brainstorm together how we can solve some of these challenges, how we can innovate and change. And working together always brings the best results as we get a wide variety of ideas, of information and capabilities that can enable our business. So we hope you've enjoyed this talk today. And if you want any further information or to discuss any more topics around this, please feel free to contact your Computer Centre account manager or reach out directly to us through our website www.computercentre.com.